Hi, I'm Brett Kelly, curator of the National Civil War Museum, and this is another See, Touch, and Feel moment brought to you by Dixon AC&R. Today we're going to be talking about some of the photographs in our collection. Here we have uh, four images of uh, individuals from the first Rhode Island light artillery. Back in 1862, as the uh, regiment was on the move, uh, the colonel of the regiment, J. Albert Monroe, discovered a young African-American uh, boy riding on one of the battery horses. When he approached him, he asked him uh, who he was and what he was doing. The young man coolly replied, I belong to this here battery. <laughs> and the uh, colonel asked him what he was doing, what was his job. Uh, Think, knowing that he wasn't actually part of the battery at this point anyways. Uh, he asked him what his job was and he said he worked for Charlie May. Uh, he would clean his bugle, take his horse to get it watered, clean his clothes, and basically do whatever he wanted. Well, the uh, colonel was quite taken with this young man at this point. Uh, as a matter of fact, he wrote about it after the war. Uh, he said he was captivated by this young man. And uh, from that time on, uh, he and this boy were inseparable all the way up until uh, after the Civil War. Now, uh, the photographs we hear, have here, we have one of uh, Little Dick standing for his portrait uh, inside a, a tent studio. You can see because the, uh, you can see the ground there, but you can see the tent canvas. He's got his hand on his hip and he's wearing a Union uniform. Now this would have been probably before African Americans were allowed in uniform, but he was, uh, officially he was the Colonel's servant, but he was probably also served as like a regimental mascot as well because of his young age and everything. And so he was probably given this uniform uh, just to make him stand out a little bit. Um, but you can see uh, by the way he's standing, he's very erect, he's got his hand on his hip and he's looking very proud in his uniform. In this uh, image right here, we have uh, Colonel Monroe and Little Dick standing there outside of the Colonel's tent. Again, Little Dick has his hands on his hips and his chest out, and he's wearing his uniform with a great amount of pride. Now over here, we have the same uh, setting, except it's Little Dick with two other officers from the first uh, Rhode Island artillery. And in this one, he is standing next to the officers and he's whittling a stick, looking pretty tough, like he owns the place. <laughs> so you can tell he really uh, liked, and he was very proud that he was able to serve with the, uh, with the battery. Uh, over here, we have another image of him. This, I believe, is an Ambro type, and it's a close-up of him. He's wearing, it's not the same uniform, but he is wearing a kepi, and it appears to be a waterproof kepi. Uh, so uh, he did have, uh, obviously, several uh, uniform components that he could wear throughout. It's actually fairly rare to get a series of photographs of a uh, African-American uh, servant, officer's servant, uh, during the war. So this is, is really quite something that we're, we're very pleased to have in the collection. Now, Little Dick was very brave, apparently. Uh, there are several anecdotes that the Colonel tells about after the war. Uh, one is uh, at Cold Harbor. Uh, in the middle of the night, the uh, regiment was being shelled. And uh, after about an hour or so, uh, Dick came up and knocked on the Colonel's uh, tent uh, door frame. And the Colonel had him come in and he, and he uh, went in there and he said, those darn fools, afraid of a little shelling, of a few shells. Uh, he basically was laughing because everybody was running and, and ducking and hiding and dodging. And he said, you know, him thinking it's as safe anywhere as anywhere. Uh, and another uh, story that the Colonel tells uh, was on the battlefield of Antietam. Uh, in this case, uh, Dick had been known to follow the colonel out onto the battlefield just to assure himself that the colonel was safe. Well, the colonel was so worried about uh, Dick getting hurt uh, at the Battle of Antietam, he had some of his men actually tie Dick up behind the line so that he could, couldn't get away and 
go out into the field and get hurt. That's how much the colonel cared for him and how much he cared for the colonel. Uh, they stayed together throughout the Civil War. After the war was over, Dick accompanied the regiment back to Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, unfortunately, like so many stories in the Civil War, this one did not necessarily have a happy ending. Uh, Dick uh, passed away uh, in 1867 before he uh, turned 18 years old. And so uh, his story came to an end, but it was uh, a great story uh, of this young man serving his country and uh, serving uh, his battery that he was so invested in and loved so much. And we are, again, thrilled to have these in the collection. And uh, we hope that uh, many future generations will be as inspired by these photos as we have been. Thanks again. This has been Brett Kelly, and this has been a C Touch and Feel moment. Thank you.